I recently got a new camera and I'd love to go to New York City and get some street photos there. So I think I'll plan my trip using Apple Notes and a shortcut I wrote. So let's click on the little icon for it and it gives us an alert. Enjoy the adventure. Please select Trip Planner from the Apple Maps share menu. Maps will open next. All right, so let's head to New York. We see it's a cool 15 hours and 39 minutes. That's nice. I'm gonna just go ahead and click on it right there. And from here, we're gonna to go to our little share menu, the box with the up arrow, and we're gonna open the Trip Planner demo, just like the little alert told us to. And we're gonna make a new trip. Here we are, we have a nice note, and it has our title and our description and the address of City Hall. That kind of gets us in the vicinity, right? But let's add maybe a couple of stops. So let's go back to Maps. We'll clear this one out. And of course we have to go to the Empire State Building. Right there, so let's add that. We'll click our share menu. We'll click our trip planner. But this time we're gonna to append to our existing note, which is our New York adventure. And there we go. It added it right to it. All right, but we have to have one more stop Okay, so there it's added it. Fantastic, but let's say we want to do a little research about the house and we want to just add it to our note here. So I'll go to the share menu in the notes app and I'll run another little shortcut I wrote called chat. So it says ask chat GPT. And it's thinking. All right, it's been copied to the clipboard. Fantastic. So we'll just tap down here and we'll paste it. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff about the Royal Tenenbaums and it was just appended to our note. Okay, so let's look real quick on how we built this one. Here are some screenshots of this shortcut and of the ChatGPT shortcut in case you'd like to grab them to help you follow along because this one is just a little bit detailed. I'll also put a link in the description to a free PDF version of these screenshots. Okay, let's open our shortcuts application and let's go to our trip planner demo and click the three dots to see how this is built. So our first action is to receive URLs and four more types of input from the share sheet. Now, where I got this is I opened up the little information icon and then I enabled show in share sheet. And when I did that, it automatically places this action right at the top of our shortcut. Now, if you're building this on an iPhone, this little I with the circle in it is down at the bottom of the screen. Okay, then the next thing we do is an if action because we want to test to see if there's actually anything coming in. So if nothing is coming in, that means that we are running this shortcut either from a bookmark on our home screen or from the shortcuts app, or maybe we've asked Siri to run it. So if there's no value coming in, the first thing we do is dismiss Siri, and then we show an alert. And this alert, just says, please select the trip planner, right? And it has a title of enjoy the adventure and I just turned off the cancel button. Then the next thing we do is open our maps application. And since I'm building this on an iPad, it gives me the option to open it in the slide over mode. Then we stop the shortcut. But if we're running this from the maps share menu, then data will be coming in, so that condition is otherwise. So if data is coming in, 
we'll end our if test and then we'll start getting all kinds of information from the shortcut input and the first thing we get is the maps URL that's this action right here we get it from the shortcut input and we could have chosen other places to get it from like the clipboard but we wanted the shortcut input then we use this location action that's this one right here and we selected shortcut input for it now from the location action we get addresses which has its own action get addresses from input and then we get latitude and longitude from that location action and those are selectable okay then we get the URL and this would be the URL of the website in case we have a location that has a website but instead of getting that from the location information we get that directly from our shortcut input even though we're still using this get details of location we just selected the shortcut input instead and the same is true with the phone number okay we use the get details but we use the shortcut input as a source then we open a menu and the menu asks us if we want to have a new trip or if we want to append to an existing trip so if it's a new trip we ask for input we ask for text and that's this action down here we ask for text and we have a prompt that says inner note and the first line is the title and I just like to put that in so I'm reminded that the first line is going to be the title of the note and then we allow multiple lines then we create a note and we use this input as the information that goes into the note then we do a carriage return we put the current date and I got my notes stored into my second brain folder and this is a folder I had already made in the notes application so it's important that before you start building the shortcut whatever folder you want to put this in go ahead and make that inside the notes application first okay we do not want it to open when run now if we choose a pen to an existing note we use the find notes action and that's this one right here now this one's kind of buggy in 17.4 and I have a little video on what to do if this doesn't come up right so please check that out if you're having problems with it not saying find all notes but just saying filter notes and it won't let you change it check that video out I put a link in the description as well okay so I added a filter that is folder is EDC second brain that's just the folder I was using same folder as up here and then I sort by last modified date with the latest first and I limit it to five notes because I figure I won't be working on more than five different trips at any time you can make this any number you want I think five is good for me maybe different for you and then we want to choose from our notes and that action is actually called choose from list the choose from menu action is this menu up here this is the choose from menu action and then this is the choose from list action okay so on this one we don't want to select multiples we just want to select one note because we're going to append to one single note okay then we ask for text the same thing as we did before and that's the asks for input menu but this time we have some dashed lines so when it appends to the note it puts a little separator there so if you have multiple entries into the note it's easy to see where those entries are and then I just put a carriage return with a current date and another carriage return with this provided input right here so you want to make sure it's this one and not the one uh, further up in the new note section so one way to do that is if you do this you can say select variable and then come all the way down here Went too far and then select provided input here and then we append all of this to the chosen item and what that means 
is we append it to this note, the one we choose. Then we end our menu, and then we use the text action, this action right here, to build this container that holds all of our information. Typed in address and did a carriage return, and then I wanted to use this address's information, but it doesn't happen to be in my scroll bar here. So what I did instead was use select variable, and then I went all the way up to where we collected all that information, and I found addresses and I tapped on that. And then that added it to my text container. Similarly with website, phone number, lat and long, and the maps URL. So this is all the information we collected up above. So now we want to go ahead and append all of this. We want to append the text to the result of our choice. So we either are going to append this to a new note or we're going to append it to the appended note. Once we do that, we create a tag using the create tag action. And I just call it EDC location. If that tag already exists, it won't duplicate it. It'll just use the existing tag. And then we want to make sure we do not open when run. Now we want to add our tag to our appended note, right? So that's this note right here. Then we show our second brain folder, whatever folder you're using, we show that one. And then we open this action here. And Apple Shortcut calls that tags to notes for whatever reason, but that's what they call it. So I'll click and hold on that and you'll see it as a choice down here, tags to notes. That's what this is. So it opens that note that we first appended and then we add a tag to. And then we stop the shortcut. All right, that's a long one. Let's run it real quick. So there is our little alert. And you can see it's in green here because it's running now. And when we say OK, it opens maps. So let's go to New York. Let's go, let's say, to the Empire State Building. There's the Empire State Building. We can go up here to our share menu and we can use the trip planner demo and we'll just make a new note just like we saw on the use case at the beginning. Okay, here's how the chat shortcut works. Pretty much the same as our trip planner in that it receives input from the fact that we're showing it in the share sheet. Remember, if you're building this on an iPhone, this is down at the bottom. And then this comment is important here, uh, especially this down here. Make sure that chat GPT is on your device. I just use the free version 3.5 and then make sure you're logged into it. And I just use my Apple ID to log into it. Then we just ask for text and that's our ask for input right here. And the prompt I used was ask chat GPT and I allow multiple lines and then I use this action which will show up once you've installed uh, the chat GPT application from the App Store and uh, you want to make sure that you start a new chat and you also want to make sure that you're using 3.5 or the latest one that's free right there. Okay. Then we do a test if the shortcut input doesn't have any value and just like we did on the trip planner then we make a little text box with our provided input and that's the question that we had asked the uh, chat GPT app and then a carriage return in the current date and then an answer caption and then we just use this ask chat GPT which shows up right there. So I just clicked that. Okay, then we create a new note, right? We create a new note with this text box and that folder, the same one we use for the trip planner. You could actually make it a different folder, but then that gets confusing. So I like to keep it in the same folder. And we do not want it to open and run. Then we copy the text to the clipboard. And that's just uh, to 
keep it local and when it expires I just left them at the defaults then we create a tag chat GPT and then we make sure it's not open when run then we add a tag to note just like we did with our trip planner we show our folder just like the trip planner and we open tags to notes okay otherwise if it's running from inside another application like Apple Notes then we do our little spacers our current date we do the question caption with the provided input and this is the question that we asked chat GPT and then the answer which is just the chat GPT response that we pick from our scroll bar right there then we copy this one to the clipboard same deal I just left the defaults but this one has the spacer and the current date so this one is the one that is going to go to the note that we ran it from then we show this alert that the chat has been copied to the clipboard and there was no title on this one and we turned off the show uh, cancel button then we end our if and then we stop the shortcut and that's all there is to this one what's the origin of Apple shortcuts I hope this helps thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one Bye for now.